Okay, so we're going to work in Chapter 13 now, which is mostly about credits, but it also covers the self-employment tax. And so um, the first one is actually the self-employment tax problem. And so this is exercise 1324. Um, in 2024, Miranda records net earnings from self-employment of $200,000. She has no other income. Determine the amount of her self-employment tax and um, her AGI income tax deduction. So Miranda's self-employment tax calc is very straightforward because she is over the Social Security max, over the FICA max, which I think for 2024 was 168600 and so um, we're just going to take her whole 200000 and calculate the tax. So to get there, I, you see I got the results here. The result, answer is going to be 26262 But that's because we have to take the 200000 and multiply it times 0. 0.9235, which is just basically 100% times uh, minus the 7.65% that they're going to give us as a deduction as a 4 AGI uh SE tax deduction. So we we multiply the two hundred thousand by 0. 0.9235 to bring it down to the amount after the deduction, and so that brought us to two hundred thousand times 0. 0.9235 brought us to one hundred eighty four seven hundred. That's what we base the tax on. Just multiply that times the Medicare part since they're over this taxpayers over the Social Security max or the over the uh, FICA base. Um, the 168.6. So we're going to take the whole amount that is subject to the tax, 184.7, and we'll multiply that times just the Medicare part. And so the just the Medicare part of the tax is 184.7 times 0 0.029. That's both sides of the Medicare tax, 1.45% twice. And so that brought us to 5,356. That's the Medicare piece. Then we just add the entire amount of the FICA tax, the base times the 12.4%, um, uh, which is 6.2 times 2. On Social Security tax or self-employment tax, I'm sorry, self-employment tax is Social Security tax and Medicare tax for a self-employed person. So they have to pay both sides of the tax. So we know that the Medicare tax is 1.45 for employees, but it's doubled for the self-employed. So that's why I'm using 2.9%. And then the, the FICA tax, for the Social Security component, is 6.2% for an employee. It's doubled now because this is a self-employed person. So that's why it's 12.4%. So in any case, we had our 5,356 for Medicare. We add the, the maximum FICA tax of 20,906 to get a total tax for SC tax of 26,262. So that's what they want right there. Then when you go to the deduction four, it's so straightforward. Once you have the tax, you just divide the social security tax or the uh, for self-employed people, the SE tax times 50%. Uh, time, you divide it by two or multiply it by 50%, I should say. And that brings you to 13,131. So this problem is not complicated. The only thing you have to know is that, look, she made $200,000. It's more than the max so, uh, FICA tax of 168.6. So we have to take this other approach where we calculate how much is her um, Medicare portion on the part that exceeds 168.6. So that what best way to do that is just to do calculate the Medicare tax on all of the income that's subject and add to it the maximum amount of the FICA tax that would be due. So that's problem 1324. Then we go to problem 1333, which is the earned income credit. We got Jason, a single taxpayer that lives in an apartment with his three minor children. Uh, he supports the children, so he's going to be eligible to, depending on his income, to see if he can get the earned income credit. So he earned 28.4, which is looking very good for getting an earned income credit during 2024, and he uses the standard deduction. So we have to calculate the amount of his earned income um, credit. And so you, when you're doing this, if they don't, if they don't give you the same number for both, then you would need to calculate um, the earned income credit on the earned income and on the AGI. But since the only income they state with for this one is his earned, we just have to do one calculation.
on the amount of the earned. So the credit's going to be 6634 and here's how I came to it. The full credit for a single person with three kids is 7830 from the table. The table is in your textbook on page 1315, and the table shows it shows, warning, it shows 23 and 24 years. So you have to look at the correct year. But this is 2024. So when you go to 2024, you'll see married filing joint has four different lines, starting with no children all the way up to three children. Um, and for married filing joint, then for 2024, for other taxpayers, which this person is, a single person, then they have four lines also, starting with no children all the way up to three. But if you go all the way, uh, on the 2024 option in the top part of the chart under other taxpayers to three or more children, then you see the earned income base is 17.4 and 17.4 times 40% is where the maximum credit comes from. But they actually gate 17.4 times 45% brought you to the maximum credit of 78.30, which they actually show in the table. So in the table, if you go across on the line for other taxpayers in 2024 of three or more children, you're going to see the maximum credit is 7830. And then we have to see how much he is over the base to see if he loses some of his credit or not. So he is over the base because the phase out base is 22,720. So I calculated the phase out in this lower portion here. And I said, OK, his income is 28,4. The base, according to the table, on page 1315 is 22720. So I see I have to see how much he exceeds the base. 284 minus the 22720 gives me 5680 that he exceeded the base uh, for the phase out. And then we're going to multiply times 21.06%. Notice that's a percentage. So when I did it, I just converted it to a decimal course because it's really hard to multiply with percentage, percentages unless you have a really fancy calculator. But in any case, 5680 times 0 0.2106, which is 21.06%, gives us the amount that he's going to lose of the earned income credit. 1,196 is the amount that's phased out of his EIC. So we go back up here to, this was our total credit, um, 7830 at the top of our calc here. And we had to subtract from that the amount that he lost or the amount that was phased out of 1196. So 7830 minus 1196 left his credit at 6,634. And that's all there is to it. So I'm going to leave it with that.